afternoon, and, and thank you for coming on a Sunday when I'm sure you have many things to do and you've been working very hard. I want to, you have been, right? During the day, right, I'm sure you have. It looks, you look like you're the kind that, that are conscientious, hard workers. I want to start before I talk today about why I'm here and why you're here. I'm sure you sometimes say, well, why am I here on Sunday? And the reason I'm in this field and the reason I wrote this book was actually, I've been very fortunate. I've been to many, many countries. Um, I, I counted one time and it's something like 72 countries. And most of those countries I've been to doing teacher education for English. So you can see that in many countries around the world, there's a great interest in learning English. There are people like you sitting in many countries all around the world um, thinking, how can I teach English better? And I noticed that, um, the or they, they've told me, and I've, I've observed many classes in universities and high schools, that there's a great range of why people are studying English today. I mean, there's the classic junior high, senior high class where the people are there because somebody up in the ministry said, you're a junior high student and you have to have three hours of instruction in English every week. And so they're there because they're told to be there and they don't want to be there. And if you happen to be in one of those teaching situations, you don't have an easy task. It's hard to motivate young people to think, why am I here? Why am I studying English? All I need to do is speak Korean and I can go speak with my friends. So they're one kind of person. The other kind is the kind of person who really feels they need and want to learn English. And they're the ones that will be in all, any place they can, a private language institute, any kind of program that will get them some further competency in English. And they're the ones who, by and large, will become fluent in English. So why are all these people struggling to learn English? I think for a lot of people, they believe it's going to bring them some kind of opportunities. That what it may be is, well, they'll get a better job, They'll be able to travel to countries they've always wanted to. Um, they'll be able to watch a movie from the United States and they won't need subtitles. So there's many, many reasons. But generally it's because they believe that this language, in opposition to any other, French, Japanese, Chinese, that this language has value for them. And so this, I think, is what's leading us and, and, and the world to more and more and more people are speaking English, and for that reason, I consider it an international language. That it is a language that many people today value highly. So today I want to examine that issue. Well, if it is an international language, what do we mean by that? And more importantly for your purposes today, because you're looking at culture and language teaching, is to examine what's the relationship between an international language and culture. Is it just the same as like if you're learning Japanese or you're learning Korean or you're learning Chinese, you have to know something about that culture. And you think of, well, there's Japan, there's China, there's Korea. But when there's English, which country do you need to learn about? Which culture? And if it's an international language, that's a lot more of a problem. So what I'm going to do today is, is on the overhead here then, I want to talk about, first of all, what do we mean by an international language? And in terms of just language, foreign language teaching in general, what's the role of culture in teaching any language? And given that, should it be any different for English? If this is the role of culture in teaching Korean, then is that the same as the role of culture for teaching an international language? And I don't think it is, and I hope I can convince you of that today. So let's start out with the idea that English is an international language. I, it makes sense that if it's international, there should be a lot of people who speak it, because how can it be international unless you have people around the world speaking it? So what I want you to do is just for yourself, I want you to think of the five most widely spoken languages in the world today. Just think about what's the first, second, third, fourth, and fifth. Okay, some guesses? What are they? What's the first? Okay, what, what, Mandarin, right? 
because Cantonese is actually much further down the list. And, and even though we say, well, there's only well, Chinese, there are all these what are called dialects, and they're very, very different. That if you're a Cantonese speaker, you're not going to be able to understand the Mandarin speaker. So it's Mandarin. Okay, what else? French? Okay. German? Russian? Spanish? Arabic? Portuguese? I haven't heard two that are in the top. Actually, three. English? Okay, we've got English. Hindi. Hindi. Ah, that's great. And one other that we didn't get in the top. Uh, all right, so we've got Chinese that far surpasses um, any other language. Um, English, someone did say Spanish, Hindi, Arabic, and Bengali. So no one said Bengali. And I, I don't think, normally people don't think of these languages of India, Bengali or Hindi, because very few people realize the density of that particular area of the world. So those are very, very um, numerous. There's many, many speakers of those languages. And then Russian, Portuguese, Japanese, and German. I don't think anyone said Portuguese or Japanese. Someone said Portuguese? OK. All right. That, and that's because we've got Brazil, which is a huge country, bigger than all of Europe. And so you've got a, a very, very large population there. But I don't think anyone would think, well, Hindi or Bengali are international languages, even though they're so widely spoken. And what is, for our purposes today, very puzzling is if we said, well, an international language should be widely spoken. We've got Mandarin that has three times as many speakers of the, of the language than English. So why have we said English is the international language? Why do we call that a world language, a global language? And very few people would say, well, a Mandarin is a global language. And the reason is, is that we didn't, I didn't clarify, and, and none of you asked, um, well, do you mean the number of native speakers? Or do you mean the number of people that speak it, whether it's their first, second, third language? Now, if we take the number of native speakers, yes, Chinese, Mandarin, is, is far ahead. But if we add in the number of people who know English today, then we get that English is going to far surpass, well not far surpass, but be close to Chinese. So we have many, many people in the world today speaking English, and in fact what we're getting is more people who speak it as their second language than people who speak it as their native language. So it's a very historic time because just within the past few years, the number of second language speakers of English is more than the number of native monolingual speakers. Now there's many contexts in which people speak English today, and this is kind of a characterization of the people who speak English today. It was first talked about by a linguist called Kachu, who's an Indian. And Kachru said, well, we can characterize the kinds of people who speak English today by where they live. So we call that first area the inner circle. And that's Australia, Canada, the United States. And notice the term inner. It's as if somehow they're special. They're in the very core of it. The outer circle is countries in which English has an official role. So you would think it would be a country where almost everyone speaks it, speaks it well. And this, these are countries like India, Singapore, Nigeria. Actually, if you look at the number of countries that require or where English is an official language, it's very surprising. Many, many African countries do. And so they'd be in the outer circle. Oh, and, and by the way, it, it might interest you to know that English is not the official language of the United States. That actually the United States has no official language. And we decided the people who founded the United States